We've got blood curdling resurrections. Psychotic waves. <laughs> Sadistic demons. We've even got the world's most deadliest Rubik's Cube. Is this the greatest horror adaptation ever? This isn't for your eyes. Or is it glorified torture porn? Hiya guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be reviewing Clive Barker's 1987 masterpiece, Hellraiser. Now, if we're talking about some of the most iconic horror icons of all time, Hellraiser has to be in the chat. He hasn't got a massive lump of films to pull from, but this is one of the greatest openings for a horror icon ever. Well, you say he hasn't got a massive lump of films. He's got a massive lump of films, but a lump of shit. Because <laughs> I would argue there's only three yeah. decent ones. Four, if you're a hardcore fan, I'd, I'd never dislike. Yeah. I, I watched it as a kid, it's fine. But I think probably one to four, the official ones, the rest are just, they're not really Hellraiser films. I think they just tagged on Hellraiser to keep the rights yes. in the, the studio. Yeah, yeah, hang definitely. On. Um, but yeah, I love this film. I I love the aesthetic. I love the fact that it's British. <laughs> and well, I don't, this what? is the thing, right? Is that it's supposed to be in America. It's supposed to be an American movie, but it's clearly the most British movie yes. you'll ever see. Every yeah. location. And I spent all night last night going, that is the most British house I've ever seen. That is the most British hospital I've ever seen. Yeah. Everything is just British, but it's supposed to be in America. I know. It, did, did, it wasn't Pinhead on one of those like red uh, double-decker buses on the top. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then when she runs for help, she goes in a red uh, phone box. Huh, hello, and the bob he's got one of those like black bobby hats. The cop. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going off track here. I love this film. It's awesome. And what I was going to say about the British thing, even though you're saying it's meant to be American, is that because it's uh, British made and because it's low budget, you feel like you're watching like a hammer horror movie. Do you know? What I, you get that vibe? Yes. It does feel like a hammer horror movie, definitely. It's got that aesthetic. Yeah. But yes, like we said, guys, we're going to be jumping into this one. We're just going to go through the movie. We're going to, going to, we're going to kind of just run through it as we go along. Uh, so, Jenks, if we talk about the opening, it has got one of my favourite openings ever. It sets the film up perfectly. Yeah. We've got that opening line, What's your pleasure, Mr. Corton, where Frank gets the puzzle box. I can't remember the official name for La it. it laminate the name. Uh, configuration box. There we are. I knew you'd come to the rescue, minute, Jenks. Yeah. And then it cuts straight to Frank sitting in that room. You've got oh, the dark so room and the spotlights on him and he's trying to figure this puzzle. But then you've got that great soundtrack, the soundtrack that comes when the Cenobites arrive. Yeah. And then you've got the cracks in the wall and like the blue coming through. And then obviously you've got the chains. It is one of the best openings for a horror film ever. You watch that opening and you know you're in for a for a disgusting ride. Yes, uh, I think this film is great. Uh, I've read I read the book a few years ago, The Hellbone Heart, and I only read it because it's really short. <laughs> I like short books, but yeah, with the beauty of a short book, it feels like you read. It's, it's very close to the movie. Uh, yeah. Because it's a bit of a novella, and I I love it. I, I know in the book he never really names him Pinhead, and I suppose nobody in the films ever call him Pinhead. But I think uh, he's Pinhead. Who cares? You know? Yeah, of course. And um, he is one of the best monsters ever. He's kind of like almost quite good looking as well. You know, he's sort of like a bit like a Dracula thing of like you can't take your eyes off him. Uh, well, definitely, yeah, yeah. I love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, of, of of course. Like Pinhead is well, it's a nickname, really. He was never actually yeah. meant to be called Pinhead. It's just something that stuck. And I think even the studios run with it now. He is Pinhead, but I think obviously um, that the main name for him is the Hell Priest, which I think is a million times better. Obviously, yeah. Now, so. With this story, we are talking about Pinhead, but the movie hardly revolves around this character. He is in it for mere minutes, yeah. which works well. I kind of want to see him more because of how iconic the Cenobites are. 
But the story revolves around a husband and wife, Larry and Julia. They move into this new home. Who belo- It belongs to Larry's parents, but no one's lived in there for a long time. And he's got a daughter, Kirsty, as well. So they move into this new house. And his brother, Frank, who we see at the start of the film, was basically living in this house before they came along, before he ran into the Cenobites. And the film kind of gets going then with this, with, with the main story where you've got Julia, who clearly from the start of the film has got this massive lust for Frank. Yeah. And she's had an affair with this guy and she hasn't really got over it. There's a scene where she finds loads of photos of Frank with loads of women and she rips the head off one of the women. And it all gets going when uh, Larry, the father, cuts his hand, uh, taking a bed up the stairs. That's a horrible and he pathetically... Bit. Horrible, pathetically goes up into the attic space yeah. or just the, the top floor space, holding his hand. And the blood drips into the floorboards, and that's when we start getting Frank then. Um, the laws of physics are off when you're dealing with the Cenobites. Frank needs blood, he comes back to life, and basically uh, allu- allures Julian into killing people for him so he can take their blood and he can come back to his normal yeah. form. But that's the main plot of this movie. That's where it takes us. Like I said, the Cenobites are in it for a million minutes, which, work, like I said, works well. But that's the main plot of the movie. Yeah, and what's great about it is that it's, it's quite a simple plot, really. Uh, she has to kill people to bring it back, and he's kind of a fugitive from hell or the other world. It's not really yes, it's hell. Yes, good way of putting it, yeah. And uh, they're kind of like bounty hunters, you know. They they He's escaped, and they want to bring him back. And Kirsty kind of makes a deal with them to spare her life. Uh, to take Frank because they were because they are pissed off that he ever escaped and nobody ever escapes hell. But somehow he managed it. Uh, it's so cool, isn't it? Yes, yeah. great. And one of my biggest problems with this film, and it's not really a problem, it's just something I was like, at least make us feel sorry for them because Julia goes out and finds these guys to bring back so she can kill them to resurrect Frank. But the first guy she brings back is an absolute piece of shit, and you're like, oh, I hope you get killed. <laughs> You don't sorry from a at all. Like shouting at her down the stairs, calling her like calling her names and shit. Like, oh, you're not gonna fucking back out now. Yeah. And then when they get up into the attic, you're like, oh, just kill him already. Where we should feel sorry for him. Like yeah. this, this guy is being lured into a house to to have his blood sucked out to resurrect yeah. someone. A horrible you death. Sorry from at all. It's horrible when she hits him across the face with a hammer. Oh, so and harsh. His jaw is broken, and you can see his teeth are snapped. And yeah, yeah, it's disgusting. Yeah. Um, so. With the the best thing about this film is the body horror. Now, it was, it was made on a shoestring budget, uh, directed yeah. by Clive Barker as well, because I think he directed it because he had such a bad time on his, was it? Raw um, Head Rex. Raw, I was going to say Metal Beast then. Raw Head Rex is a piece <laughs> of shit. I know you love crap like that. But um, yeah. he finally said, look, he put his money where his mouth is basically. So, look, I'm going to direct it. And he nailed it. And the the effects, the the practical effects on this with the skin ripping and stretching and the loose skin on Larry when he's, sorry, when Frank takes over Larry's body, oh, he's got his skin and it's yeah, loose. Yeah. It's such a good effect. Like, it's amazing. Love it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's so good. And specifically when Frank's being resurrected first, Yes. And he's coming oh, through so the floorboards good. and his body's coming together. And even just the little things where his organs underneath the floorboards start coming back together and yeah. you can hear the little beat. Uh, just an absolute masterpiece of, of practical effects. It's it's insane. And yeah. every time you see Frank as well, and this is what I wanted to talk about mainly is is Frank's uh, progression back into yes. his human form. And obviously every time uh, Julia brings someone back for him to kill He's a little. He comes a little bit more back to life, and for some reason, he's wearing a suit <laughs> over his decrepit skin. It's full of blood and horrible. He's like, come on, put some in shit on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's wearing a lovely suit, like full of blood. Yeah, put an overall on or something, like a painting overall. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know uh, this film came out right, and it came out eighty seven. I was looking into eighty seven. We had Monster Squad. Shout out to Barry from uh, Wolfman's Got Nards. We've got, you had Evil Dead 2. We had Elm Street 3, Predator, The Gate, Creepshow 2, your, one of your favourites. Yeah. And we had Street Trash. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Jaws for the Revenge. You know, yeah. But it was a fucking good, good year for horror, wasn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, I I don't think there's a year in the 80s that doesn't have like a massive stack of horror movies. Yeah. Like, 
people who were allowed to go to cinema to see uh, 18 cert movies in the 80s were just spoilt for choice. Considering yeah. how we are now, uh, 80s dominated, was dominated by horror films. Yeah. But yeah, Street Trash, the same year as Hellraiser. That's uh, hard to believe, no, isn't it? No, it's, I tell you, it's hard to believe. Street Trash came out the same year as Predator. <laughs> <laughs> the, the contrast between the two. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really good year. Um, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, do you watch Rick and Morty? Uh, no, never never got into it. Oh, it's so good. Well, there's a Hellraiser episode in like season four or five or something, right? Where uh, there's, Hel- there's Hellraiser type characters, and they keep and they keep on saying, uh, uh, "We love pain. Pain is our pleasure, but we hate uh, pleasure." So. Pleasure is also our pain. It's like a conundrum of going round and round. <laughs> I didn't mean to cause you any pleasure, which causes me pain, which gives me pleasure. So <laughs> it's so funny. You need to watch that episode. I can't remember what season, but check it out. <laughs> yeah. I will. I definitely will. Right, Jenks, what, are, what is your favourite quote from the movie? Um, oh, I'm going to steal yours now, probably. It's Jesus wept. Jesus wept. It's such a strange thing to say, but it's when he's when uh, La, uh, Frank is pinned up, he looks like Larry. Uh, he's got his skin, yeah, and he, he's all fucked up from the the chains and stuff. And he just says this line, and I, it's just, I don't know, I just love it. It's so strange, and it doesn't need to be said, yeah, but and, said, and I love it. Yeah, of course, it's the way he licks his lips before he says it. Yeah, it's just like. Frank's last hurrah because he is a, he's such a disgusting pig in this film. Oh yeah. my god, and like he's talking to his niece and that whole come to daddy. Yeah, it's horrible. Oh my god, it's horrible. Yeah, and I don't know why Julia ever falls for this guy. You get that flashback uh, from when they first met and they end up sleeping together, and they're like they're getting it going, and he, he pulls out a fucking blade and cuts her cuts her top like. Girls love a bad boy. <laughs> That's why my wife's with me. <laughs> the clone. How Amy. much? <laughs> how much of a red flag is that? Yeah, probably. And uh, this woman's obsessed with him. Oh my god! Um, but so yeah, what, Frank's Frank's a piece of shit. <laughs> so, what's your favorite line or scene? So that was one of them. It is such such a great such a great scene. But it's every single line that that um, Doug Bradley delivers yeah, as so Pinhead. Oh my god! And it's got to be. Um, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Yeah. It's such such a good line. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. But I love how straight he gives these lines. There's no emotion on his face. He's always stood straight. And he's got such a powerful voice. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. But yeah, that that's got to be that's always been one of my one of my favorite lines from the movie. Do you know what? I the only gripe I have is that throughout the film, it seems to be that like the Cenobites are not necessarily evil. They follow rules, and they have no interest in you unless you've called for them or whatever. They they just they they haven't got time. They're not just like Freddy trying to kill people for the sake of it. But like towards the end, they kind of like go on a bit of a killing rampage around the house a little bit, isn't it? And I've never... Not really. I wouldn't say so. Like, Kirsty still called them and they never said that they were going to let off the hook. I suppose. She just delivered them. She delivered them Frank, but she still opened the box and I think she still owes them her soul. So I think they thought that Frank was the the big fish to catch. Yeah. But... I do, I I didn't think that they were gonna let her off yeah. her off that easy to be they, honest. They certainly do it in in number three though when there's like a big the, the nightclub mask and it's like <laughs> this, uh, this, this, oh disc fish with his mustache. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. He just looks the I worst of all the Cenobites. I had a figure of disc fish when I was young. I had all of them, like the whole line of like Hellraiser guys. Uh, I loved Hellraiser three when I was a kid. I think I enjoyed it more just because they were in it more, and it was more of like a straight up horror film. Yeah, I don't mind them at three. Hellraiser one, I appreciated more as I was older because when I was a kid, I was just like, oh, where, where's Pinhead, man? I want to see Pinhead. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I know. You want to see these horror icons? Yeah. Uh, my favorite, my favorite scene. I, 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 there's so many good ones. I think again, it's literally 
when uh, Pinhead first turns up, every time he's on screen, he reminds me a little bit like Beetlejuice. Not in the not in the way he looks, but the fact that you don't see him often, but he's still the focal point of the film. You still you can't wait to see him. I don't even know how much screen time he's got. Probably even less than Beetlejuice had. Probably probably minutes. I'm guessing maybe less. <laughs> Oh, it's it's got it's got to be about five minutes and altogether, yeah. and, if they've tr- like. and they've tried to replace him a, a couple of times now in the later sequels. I mean, the last attempt, I suppose, oddly enough, the remake that came out a couple of years ago is probably the closest to a half decent looking one. Um, and I know it's controversial, but I don't hate that film. It's 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 not as bad as everyone says, and I think uh, Pinhead looks pretty decent and all the monsters do yeah. but it's kind of like a forgettable movie you know yeah i need to rewatch it but um i just thought it was an okay movie when i first watched it but i've only seen it once it's probably a movie i'm gonna have to give another go because obviously when you're remaking a film as iconic as hellraiser without doug bradley it's it's a tough one to sell because yeah with a lot of the movie monsters they're hidden behind you know heavy makeup and hats and stuff whereas specifically Freddy and Pinhead, it's Doug Bradley and Robert Englund. Yeah. They deliver these performances. It's their voice, it's their face. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's a tough one to do, but I, I think they did a great job on the new Hellraiser. Yeah. Have you got a favourite yeah, scene before you wrap up? Uh, it's got to be the lonely guy that uh, Julia brings back. when uh, <laughs> <laughs> She brings this guy back and he's, like, really shy and timid. And... They're walking up into the attic space and he just stops dead on the stairs and he just randomly says, I get lonely sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, pal. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, no not, it's, it's not your day, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not your day, boy. <laughs> well, yeah. we've got one good thing for you today. We are going to put you out of your misery. <laughs> yes, yeah. No, no, it's it's got to be um, Frank Frank first coming back together. Yes. Um, the From goo to gorgeous, as I always say. Yes. Um, no, no, that, that, that scene is just insane it's so good and it's just horrible all the goo around his fingers when he's coming back and obviously like i said when the blood goes beneath the floorboards and his organs are coming back yeah, together so clever uh the rib cage going back up into its place oh it's amazing it's so a good, good effect yeah uh right if you haven't seen hellraiser why doesn't make any sense. Uh, skip number one, go straight to number six, or as if. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh, I've only seen six. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous. Uh, if you love horror, if you love ranking, please subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Awesome. Cheers, guys. Oh.